Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. It's my goal to bring you the information and the conversations that's going to help you make the money and get the honey, because you can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And now, you know, it's always a special occasion when we got the fellas in the studio. Y'all love getting into the mind of a man. And that's what we are going to do today with the brains behind the Smooth and Groove brand. We got Mr. Keon Davis in the studio. What's happening? How you doing? I am so good. So excited for this conversation. It has been a long time coming. Yeah. And y'all, when I hit him up, when I slid in his DMs and told him I needed to get him down, to the studio, and I told him what we wanted to talk about. What you said? Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's, Let's get run it. it. And we are getting into <laughs> this conversation. It's going to be good, y'all. It's going to get juicy. So secure your edges. Secure these wigs. Okay, get your popcorn. Now it's not going to get. It's not going to get. It's not going to get that that juicy. It might get a little spicy, but we'll see. Um, and they all know what I've been saying on season two. We're not talking about business. It's time to get in your business. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so I do want to start out with the business. We'll start there, okay, to kind of ease you into the conversation mm -hmm. because most people do know you as Mr. Smooth and Groove. Mm -hmm. What is Smooth and Groove? So Smooth and Groove, we're a smoothie-based company. Uh, we started in Alabama about 2011. Mm -hmm. um, had major success real quick. You know, we was able to partner with Army University and get on campus. Um, we opened up a bunch of stores. Um, had a store inside Walmart and then... I grew too fast, too soon, with not the right structure, you know, that type of deal. So I lost, and I mean, I lost big, right? Uh, 2018, I lost over 275000 cash, mm. phew, gone, right? Um, at that point in time, it left my bank account $59,000 negative. Shut yeah. your mouth. <laughs> Man, I cannot make this up, right? And so during that time frame, I kind of went through phases and stages, right? And so at the time, I was married, I had a baby girl, and we was like, you know what? let's just relocate to Atlanta. You know, let's start over, start fresh. I was doing work down here. I was doing birthday bash and streets fest and all that stuff in my truck. I'm like, bro, I need to get to Atlanta. You know what I mean? And so we picked up everything. Um, I closed all my stores down. I moved all my equipment and storage units, brought both of my food trucks down here, and then I just restarted, right? And when I restarted, I just jumped in the truck. And everything that I seen in Atlanta, right, whether it was on Love and Hip Hop, whether it was on um, the Housewives, whether it was on Instagram or whatever I seen that was a staple in Atlanta. When I first moved down here, I jumped in my truck and I went there, right? And I mean everywhere from Magic City to Blue Flame to, you know what I'm saying, All to the, the Loft classics. to anything Atlanta classic. I was pulling my truck up. I was going inside. I was getting the owner. I was bringing them out, bringing your employees, and I was feeding them for free, right? And at the same time when I was doing that, mind you, I was broke as ever. And I was getting in my truck, but I wanted to... Um, create the word omnipresent, right? That's all I kept hearing was omnipresent. You got to be omnipresent. So I would go to one place. I'll be and there for two. And what did that mean to you? That mean I needed to be I needed to be visible everywhere at all times, no matter what, right? So when I was in my truck, I looked at it as a marketing a marketing strategy, mm -hmm. right? Where I would go, and I remember going to the loft and going to get Jason and all them boys in there. Like, hey, y'all come outside. I got something for you, right? Giving them a smoothie, giving them a wrap. They like, bro, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like they didn't had it before. They didn't had products and stuff before, but they never seen anybody just pull up and give it away. You know, and so I knew in my mind that if I did that, the first thing they're gonna do is this. Yeah, my boy, hey, this my boy, right? So now everybody that they following gonna follow like, who is this dude, right? Mm -hmm. And then the same person see me at their job. You know, it's like, damn, I just seen him at the gym. Now he over at the job, right? And so I kept doing that. I kept doing that. I kept doing that. I was driving probably 30 miles, right, to make $200 and come on home. Mm -hmm. You know, I drive 35, 40 miles, come on home, right? I was doing that every single day, you know. And eventually what I did was I seen uh, E. He had a, um, a basketball conference that he was doing for the kids. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? The same way I reached in the DM. I'm like, hey, bro, I'll come out and I'll feed your boys. You know what I'm saying? He like, all right, bet. How much you going to charge me? I was like, I'm not, right? <laughs> so I'm not going to charge you. I'll make my money on the parents. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I did that, I had did that joint. I came out, um, and E, he was like, hey, you know, ain't nobody ever did this before, right? So they expected me to give him some BS work, right? Right. So I'm like, nah, I'm giving him work. Like, I charged him double. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. giving you top-tier work. And so he like, dang, this kind of weird. Like, ain't nobody ever kind of reached out and did it like this, right? So he was like, man, I got to do something for you. And so he did, like, a little promo video, you know, show love. They posted on their end. And um, one of his followers, right, 
I guess worked for Tyler Perry or worked in the movie industry. So I got a phone call. I'm like, hey. He like, hey, you know, I seen that we looking for a, a smoothie truck. We seen that you got one with E. Uh, would you be available on this day? I'm like, yeah, who is this? He was like, oh, this such and such with Tyler Perry Studios. I'm like, huh? They were like, yeah, let's work. I'm like, all right, bet, let's get it. So then that was the initiation of me actually working in, like, the big-time industry, mm -hmm. getting a big-time check, like, working with a company that got budgets. So from there, we worked with Wild and Out, um, like all any anything that was filmed at that studio, like we got a phone call, like, hey, they filming this, they want a smoothie truck. Can you pull up? Of course. You know what but I mean? But your in was that sweat equity. Yeah. Cause you you weren't only like so many people get started and they want the money today. Like right. I started today, I need to get paid today. Right. And in a perfect world, yes, that is great. But we do not live in a perfect nah. world. And when you have that mindset, you're gonna put yourself out of business before you get into business because business does not work like that. Right. So many people are afraid of free mm -hmm. so many people i gotta charge my worth which yes eventually you get to do that but first you got to put in that time you got to mm -hmm. put in that sweat equity and so i love that you were willing to do that especially because you were down yeah definitely. it's not like i have you know a hundred thousand dollar budget to where i can afford to give out these free smoothies but you use what you had yeah. to get in the door i actually had to borrow two hundred dollars to buy a product to give mm. it away like like that's how that but but the thing for me was was that like, I knew I had a dope product, right? I knew I had a dope business. I knew I had a dope brand. I had to figure out what I was missing. You know what I'm saying? I had to figure out that missing link. And so it wasn't the product, because I made, when I was at Auburn, I made millions of dollars selling smoothies. Like, I got articles, and, and like, I was making a lot of money selling smoothies. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So, like. That just, look, this is just something <laughs> to my spirit to think about going from the millions of the dollars Man. to the negatives of the dollars. Imagine that. And, and so, like, during that, even during that time, to rewind a little bit, I got so down, so depressed, I almost committed suicide and everything. Mm. Like I, I was so because my I was tied into my money. Right. So the every morning was, I would my you, identity. You, yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So every morning I would wake up like, oh yeah, wait, like, yeah, let's go. You know what I'm saying? And then it went from that to like, ooh, <laughs> like, hold on. Like, mm -hmm. so then you start robbing Peter to pay Paul, pay Luke ball from Luke to pay John to, you know what I'm saying? And I had got it so I had got it so strategic during that time frame. To where when it came down to paying my employees, I knew that this employee would come get his check on, on Friday, right? This girl was coming as soon as checks was available. So I had to make sure I had hers on deck. I knew the other girl was going to come on Wednesday to get her check because she so wasn't really tripping. Days. You know what I'm saying? So I was writing checks for them on Wednesdays. I was giving her cash on Fridays. I was turning around and, you know what I'm saying, because I knew I had a couple of days. So when they came, let me go ahead and change that check out for cash. You know what I'm saying? Because the account was jammed up. You know what I mean? So I had to learn how mm. to just figure stuff out and maneuver my way around it just to try to stay open, you know what I mean? So the, the added layer of toughness for men, especially for you mm -hmm. at the time because you were married, mm -hmm. right? So you had the extra responsibility of, I don't just have to make sure I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I gotta make sure my employees are okay. I gotta make, my wife is gonna be looking mm -hmm. at me for something, Crazy. even if she knows yeah. what, what my circumstances are, there's still some responsibility that I have for other people, mm -hmm. which as a woman, thankfully, Thankfully, in the proper order, right? I could slip a little bit because my husband is covering me. Mm -hmm. But when you are the husband and you have that responsibility to cover your family and you don't have it, mm -hmm. I cannot imagine what that has to do, you know, yeah. mentally, yeah. And spiritually, just how that, you know, could affect you. What was that time like when you had someone to answer to at home? Well, it was, I mean, it's, it's, it's different, right? So, like, now be thinking back on it. And understanding my current situation, my current relationship, is it was just completely different. You know what I'm saying? And so from there, it's just more or less of, uh, it's like, no, nah, we good. You know what I mean? Like, hey, I know how you feel. I understand, but we good. You know, that wasn't the case then. I was going to say, did you have right? that understanding? Nah, that wasn't the case then. Not, at, at that time, it was more or less of, like, I told you so. Mm. You know what I mean? So feeling that pressure and this pressure and that pressure and like it was so bad Corey, that that like i used to go to the mall right i used to walk around the mall just to hear how good of a job i was doing you know what i'm saying like i would go you weren't hearing that at home i wasn't hearing it nowhere right so it was like i was so beat up and beat down on myself that i would just go walk around the mall because i knew everybody in there was like hey boy hey boy you doing your thing boy hey keep killing you know what i'm saying like and so but it didn't help you know, it didn't help. It didn't. None of that junk helped until, you know, I really, I really dug into myself, right? And so, like, I got a tattoo now. I just got it the other day. Every man must search his own soul. 
you know, and I just started to get to that point where I understand what that means, right? At the time, I was actually going through that, but I didn't really know what that meant. I was just finding ways to just get to the next stage. I was finding ways to get to the next day. I was finding ways to figure out how to just power up just enough to get past this. Now, once I'm done, I can just go to sleep and rest, right? But when I get back up, it's like, oh, shoot. Starting over. Yeah, you got to start over. So during that time frame, I was going to sleep tired, waking up tired, operating tired, you know what I'm saying, maneuvering tired, like everything I was doing because I was mentally just everywhere and mentally just drained to the point where, like, I just, I don't even know how I was how I was functioning. Like, it's all such a blur that it was like, oh, we just got past it, you know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of what it was during that time. But, like, now, I mean, even, even in the space of business and relationship, it's different. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now it's it's a partnership. I don't want to talk about the now yet. Okay. I want to go right. back to the then. Let's, go, let's go to the then. The then is what Shapes. I'm sure taught you a whole oh, yeah. lot of lessons <laughs> to get you to what you mm -hmm. are, you know, blessed mm -hmm. to experience now. Mm -hmm. And again, we don't have these conversations. And when we do, it's usually women talking about it. So we don't ever get to hear like what the the toll that a toxic because it sounds like it was a toxic relationship yeah. i don't want to put that on it if it wasn't but <laughs> from the outside looking in it seems like it was probably not the most supportive relationship right. i'll say that right. and we don't ever get to hear from the men who are going through that mm -hmm. we never get to hear from the husband who needed the wife to big him up when he yeah. couldn't big himself up who yeah. needed the wife to say it's okay mm -hmm. you know like it's going to be okay we will figure this out not just it's on you or not I told you so or I knew mm -hmm. it was, wasn't going to work mm -hmm. because we hear like don't be that woman we right. hear that right. we don't ever get to hear from the man who had that woman um, and so now being able to experience something different I think you probably appreciate it much oh, more definitely. because you you didn't have that before so obviously the marriage did not work out mm -hmm. you are now a divorced man mm -hmm. what would you say was the biggest like lesson even if it was a hard lesson what's mm -hmm. the biggest lesson that you took from your marriage that did not work out that you are able to take into a new relationship be solid like no matter what remain solid you and know what does that mean for me i wasn't solid in my marriage oh you weren't solid i thought you were saying you, 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 nah, you nah, you're nah. looking for a woman that's gonna nah, remain nah, solid nah, nah, nah. but I you were not solid, solid. Nah. okay so yes what does that mean for you so for me like again i had so many missing voids that I try to fill those voids the best way I know how, right? And so growing up as a man, especially a black man, right? It's easy to nurture a relationship with another woman, right? It's easy to kind of like feel in that space, even if it starts off a certain way, right? It's easy to kind of take your mind and shift your mind to like, oh yeah, she bad, you know what I mean? And like, and really start to kind of nurture that space and figure out how to maneuver in that space. And that, that creates an unsolid foundation, right? So like, like looking back on it, I, I'm i like, I had to forgive myself, right? First of all, I had to forgive myself, but I also had to understand why I felt the way I felt, you know what I'm saying? And so it was just certain times and certain spaces that, you know, I just didn't feel appreciated. I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel like, you know, and everybody always talk about like, as a man, you just want to be respected, right? I feel like that's a lie. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to say that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like as a it's like, no, men want to be respected, women want to be loved, right? It's like, nah, that's a, that's a lie, right? You want to be loved. Right. Because love is the only thing that's attached to everything. Right? You don't have to love me to respect me. Right? You don't have to love me to support me. You know what I'm saying? So when you when you break all these different actions down, love is the is the core of everything. Mm -hmm. So if you love me unconditionally, Naturally, you're going to respect me. Facts. You're going to support me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going, th those are just things that are intangible that you're going to do it, when you love me, mm -hmm. right? So, to say that men just want to be respected, it's like you're missing a whole bunch of other stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, you feeling the, so it's almost like a, just like a cycle. It's like I'm not supported or we're not on the same page, whatever that means. Right today we're not on the same page mm -hmm. and because we're not on the same page i'm dealing with us not being on the same page the way i know how mm -hmm. she's dealing with it however she's she knows how and the house is crumbling right so what do you think or from your perspective what was like the final straw um i think the final straw was just like the decision you know what i'm saying i think we both knew it you know what i mean but it was just so it who was pulled just, the trigger uh well she pulled the trigger of course but like i think is it, it of course um, even though it's like 80 percent of 
divorces are filed by women. Is right. that why you say, of course? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, most women. You, so you weren't gonna pull the trigger. You well, were just gonna I suffer forever. I would have. The type of person I am, I would have tried to like just oh, make it uh, work, and then just try to do whatever I needed to do to, to fulfill my cup, right? But that wasn't that wasn't going to work, and so things happen the way that they're supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? And so even if even if I was there, because I was mentally gone a long time ago, you know what I mean? But even though it just that was just the thing, that's just what happened. You know what I mean? And so like like you said, most women. I mean, she had planned on doing this junk way before it even came out, you know. So it was like, okay, I was threatened with it multiple times, you know. So by that time, it's like, do your thing, you know. Wow. So and how long were you married? Seven years. Yep. Seven. Mm -hmm. Year of completion. Yep. You completed that mm -hmm. season. Cycle, yep. Yes. Yep, cycle, yep. So was it bittersweet? Was it, or was it just bitter? I think it was needed. You know what I'm saying? I think it was needed for both parties to kind of start the healing process to, you know, be better individuals. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what she does to, you know, I don't, I don't know. But I just know that for me, it was important for me to start healing. You know, it was important for me to forgive myself for the stuff because I was beating myself up about everything, you know, because everything, it. you grow to start to understand that everything is my fault, right? I played quarterback in college. I played quarterback in high school. So it's, it was like that mentality, like, if we win, we win. If we lose, I lost. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I I kind of was fed all of that. So all the issues and problems was my fault. You know what I'm saying? It was nobody else's fault but mine. You know, but when things go good, it's like it's we we, we did, did it. You know, so it was you know, it was just one of them breaking points where it was just kind of like, mm, you know, it was needed. Now, was it rough? Yeah, it was rough. It was definitely rough. We got two girls, you know. So that was the the part that was the roughest so you know, what space. were the conversations? Because, again, I've never had this conversation with a man that's mm -hmm. experienced divorce. I have talked to women. It's like, what did you, mm -hmm. how did you talk to your children? But what was your, I guess, what was your conversation with your daughters? Because your daughters are pretty young. Right, right. So my, my conversation was like, you know, nothing is your fault, right? This has nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still here. Like and I'm and, and I was like I'm an intentional father, right? I'm not like a like nah. She just like I'm very intentional because I didn't have mine, right? And especially for little girls, knowing the importance of their dad in their life, right? So I was very intentional, even from like taking them to school every morning. Like I, that was the thing that I loved to do. Like that was that was something that I wanted to be able to do. Is that, like I want to take my girls. I want to mm -hmm. take my kids to school. You know, like I want to create that type of freedom to take my kids to school. And so on the way to school, we listen to affirmations, right? I empower them, like we're super energized, like we're going to kill the day, like that type of conversation of what we have in the morning. Even, you know, before you go to bed, you know, we're going we're gonna to read the book, we're going to take the bath, we're going to, you know, every chance that I can. That was what I was doing. So it was even to the point where, you know, when it got bad at the house, I would leave my spot, go give them a shower, put them in the bath put them in the bed and then I would leave again. You know what I mean? Just so I can have that moment with them. That they time. can have that that time as well. And so, you know, that those were core moments that I think and I could be wrong, but I think that you know, instills that love and that 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 balance and that peace and that like that that bond with your daughter and father, you know what I'm saying? Opposed to just not doing it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So that that was kind of like my thought process on it. So like when it came to like split, my conversation was more or less of like I'm still here, right? Have you been ever able to am am how do you say that word amicably? Am you know what word I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what word I'm that, trying to yeah, say. Yeah. Have y'all been able to co-parent well? That's different. It's 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 sometimey, right? And I think it's it's sometimey because it's it's situational, right? So when it's on on their end. It's like, hey, you know, I was thinking, you know, when it's my end, it's like, nah, we got to go by this. Agree to, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, you know, it's, it's always a pick and choose and it's always a, 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 a one sided benefit, you know. And I had to learn, I had to learn that, you know, again, the type of person I am, I'm a giver. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to always be straight, right? I'm going to always be good, you know. And so I'm always like, all right, cool. Whatever's easiest for, you know what I'm saying, do that. But it, it, it's been putting me in bad positions. Because I've been like that, so I had to change that, you know. And once I changed it, it became a different, different dynamic. You know, it's like That's oh, boundaries. I, yeah, it's like hold on, all right. You know what I'm saying? I'm still, I still try a little bit, but it's not as much as as I have in the past. Yeah. And I'm able to recognize the the strategic when you're being taken advantage of. You know what I'm saying? I'm able to recognize it now. And then my lady, she's like, 
No, we're not doing that. You know. Yeah, so let's get so, okay. So let's talk about the new. Let's talk yeah, about let's the new. Talk, let's, let's go. Let's, let's go. go. He like we out with the old baby. Yeah, we yeah, in yeah. with the new baby. Okay, so as a once married, mm -hmm. divorced man, my first question: Do you want to get married again? I will. You will. I will. Yeah. Do you want to get married again? Possibly. <laughs> So my interpretation of what you're saying is if the woman I'm with is like dead set on, on marriage, you're willing to do it. But marriage is not necessarily like you feel the need that this is something you need to do again. So we talked about this, right? Okay. Me and my lady talked about it. And one of the things that we talked about is there's a difference between marriage and commitment. Facts. Right? So you can be, there's a lot of people that are married that's not committed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we're committed. You know what I'm saying? And not just committed to each other, but committed to ourselves, right? That's so for funny. me, it's like, all right, I'm committed to be the best version of myself, right? And I'm committed to that. And and to reciprocate that, she's going to receive the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because for one, it's just about me, right? I'm going to be whole myself so that now you have a whole man. Yep. You know what I mean? And even if, if I... Like mentally going to this thing, it's like I know that she always got my best interest. You know what I mean? So for me, it allows me to be more open, more vulnerable. It allows me to have less ego, right? So I've been trying to kill my ego for the longest, you know? And so it allows me to receive information or receive um, criticism, right? Because she be in my shit, boy. I be like, God damn. She ain't playing games. Boy, don't play she? no games. Though. Has she been married before? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a thing, right? Yeah. Cuz y'all have y'all have learned at least what you're not going to do again. Right. And you can bring that to one another to be better versions of yourselves. I think that is so important. Yeah. How does she have children? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does that element How does that that play in y'all's relationships? It was in the beginning it was kind of tough um because it was just like, "Hey, I don't want to overstep you know what I'm saying? And vice versa. It's like, uh, I don't really know how you raise. I don't know your you know, your strategy. I don't want to do too much, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. type of deal. But eventually, after, you know, just being interacted and, and being around, I think that my values, my morals, like who I am as a man, allows her to recognize that however I'm treating the kids, it comes from that space. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, all right, look, this is how we do it. Like, I'm, I don't, hey, whatever you feel. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I and then even with me having suggestions, it took me a while to be like, hey, no, nah, I don't think you should be, you know what I'm saying? I don't that that's gonna probably, you know, probably what I'm, ain't gonna work out. Yeah, the way you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it took me a while to even say that. But then now it's like, what you think? Like, should I? How you feel? Did I do that? You know what I'm saying? How do your daughters feel that? Because I'm assuming her kids live with her. Mm -hmm. Do you? Do you get to? Do they see you more than your your girls? Yeah, her kids. So we actually live together. So we're so in the same house. how do your daughters feel about that? So my daughters feel like they're excited. Like okay, they, okay. They got their own space, their own I'm room. I'm girl. I'm just thinking, yeah. like, that was me. I need to be living with my, you know, I yeah. want to be at my daddy's house. So they come, they got their own space. You know what I mean? They in their own space. They, so you're making them feel yeah, they, they still. Yeah, they got their own drawers. They got their own toys. They got their own, like, everything is set up. You know what I'm saying? Like it would be if, if they was there every day. You know what I mean? And so it's no difference from that space. But I think for them, they're adapting to, because we show a lot of love in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, like, it's wait a minute. Yeah. Like I, I've seen my, I seen my daughter one day I was kissing my lady. Like I was, I come in, I hug and kiss everybody. And I seen my daughter like look up and she was just like, just smiling. Oh. You know oh, what I mean? she was smiling. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. She I was thought smiling. she had an attitude. No, okay, no, no, no. Okay. She was just smiling like, dang, you know? And so she just, she feels the and kids feel love right kids feel love and and all you have to do is just love just produce love and everything else will fall into place you know and so that's that's really the the strong dynamic that uh, we try to produce and show it's like just just show these kids how to be great humans do you have baby mama drama <laughs> um a little bit a little bit. I try to. You knew I, the answer was yes based on that giggle. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, I can't imagine. I can imagine that it's challenging a lot, and and I think that it's more so challenging when your own feelings and your own emotions are mm -hmm. taking over, like the best for the kids, right? You know, versus us focusing on these. This is what's best for the children. It's mm -hmm. well, I feel this way, or mm -hmm. I don't want that, or mm -hmm. especially when you're used to getting your way. I right. think it's even more of a challenge. Um, and then when somebody else is in the picture, it's yeah. like, well, 
like know, what's up yeah. so the thing for me was was like the the beauty of what i had was i had a woman's point of view right i had a woman's point of view based on this situation mm -hmm. but someone that loves me right so it's like no and gonna tell me i'm wrong like i've been wrong a lot of times like i i had to go um you know you go through the little divorce situation and i almost got like jammed up because of my ego right and that's why i tell people all the time what does that mean so like i literally like was just tit for tat right it's like no nah, man it should be like this like you getting all this i'm doing like come on bro like you know what i'm saying like freaking i ain't doing it then you know what i mean like that type you know how most men get in that space and i think that's where most men get messed up at when it comes to like divorces separations and all that stuff we get the short end of it right and we feel like we're getting the short end because we're approaching it and attacking it from an ego standpoint right it's like no nah, man you, it should just be like this like i'm telling you this i'm showing you it should be like this and it's like nah well we're gonna go with her right <laughs> You know what I mean? And so now, as a man, you get frustrated because you feel like you ain't got no rights. So you mm -hmm. feel like you ain't doing it or you feel like they always get what they want and you're trying to give and all that. So the ego comes into play. And so that almost messed me up. And so I had to realize, and we had a conversation, me and my lady had a conversation and was like, look, you just got to do right by the girls. Forget everything else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Forget all that. It's, it's about them. What's best for them? You know what I'm saying? And so from there, from that standpoint, it was like, mm, I get it. My ego was in the way. Mm -hmm. Let me remove the ego, right? Let me get rid of the ego and let me think about being a great father. You know what I'm saying? It ain't How about me. How do we get in the short end of the stick? Yeah, of course. But it's not It's not a, and, and I will say this, right? And I'm a, I'm a strong advocate for us and I'm a strong advocate for understanding. But at the same time, we put ourselves in that position, right? As men, because, because one is most women, majority of women are very strategic, right? Very strategic. Most men, we don't, we're not approaching things with that strategic manner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We kind of figure it out as the situation come along. It's like, all right, we need to deal with this, right? Most women have already figured out every space before it even is even brought to we your attention. Got a plan. You know what I'm saying? And so now, when you do that, I'll go back to what we was talking about earlier. We dealing with so much other stuff, right? That now we got to try to compartmentalize. And, and kind of focus, and majority of the time, things slip through the cracks, right? We're not as, and, and I won't say all men, but like, I know for me, I'm not as detailed. I am, I'm better now. I wasn't as detailed as I should have been, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't paying attention to You know to the detail. kid's doctor's name? The doc, yeah, I, just, I got it in my phone. Okay, I don't know by heart, but I got it in my phone. I be like, what's what that baby doctor? What's <laughs> yeah, his name? Yeah, yeah I just had an appointment quiz? the other day. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so you be not. Y'all gonna have more kids? Um, nah, no, nah, no, nah, we ain't gonna have more That's kids. That's a no. Nah, we doing businesses. Those are kids. <laughs> your ex was not an entrepreneur. Mm -mm. Is your next an entrepreneur? My now is entrepreneur. She, yeah, yeah. Like, let me get that. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I just threw that out there. He said, put some respect <laughs> on it. She is an entrepreneur. Yeah, so, yeah. is, so for other fellas out there who are mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, they are not married yet. They're in the dating space. Would you recommend, like, do you think that made a difference that your your ex was not an entrepreneur and maybe she didn't understand, understand. the ups yeah. and the downs and the mm -hmm. real life, this is what it mm -hmm. is. And you know, your, your woman now does. Do you think that that plays a role? I think it does. I think, I mean, it's just, my lady, my lady is just like, she dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, that's just what it is. Like, it, regardless of if she was working, I think she would have the same type of mentality. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just because she a dog. And so from there, it, it creates this this level of, like, let's get it done. You know? Like, it got to get done regardless. No matter who does it, no matter what happens. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she owns multiple businesses that are in different spaces, but she's able to, like, Strategically do everything. You gonna bring her down to the show? Yeah, I'll bring her down. Y'all public, right? I, yeah. I, think you, I saw yeah. a post or something, yeah. so it's not. It's no secret, so she could come on down. Yeah, no, ain't no, down, yeah, ain't no, ain't no Let's pressure. Talk. Yeah, Let's, because I think not just again, not just because I'm nosy, even though I am a little nosy. Mm -hmm. I think that this conversation is so valuable and so helpful for men who have like given up, like f mm -hmm. f f this, because mm -hmm. y'all need love too, like right, as definitely. strong as. As many women as y'all can go out and have sex with mm -hmm. and make yourselves feel good and all of that stuff. You're still empty. You're still empty. You're still, you're still trying to feel yeah, something. And so empty. to give hope for men who are like, F it, I'm done with that. You know, and also for her, mm -hmm. we are told so many times, if you have kids, it's mm -hmm. over with for you. Mm -hmm. If you're divorced, it's over with for you. If you're in Atlanta, it's yeah. over with for you. No, and it's it's crazy because true. like my 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 like my real shift like in my mind was like I had character flaws, right? Mm. And so when I realized I had character flaws, 
Um, it was the first social proof uh, dinner. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The all white joint. Everybody was there. I was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so when I was there, I was like, that was in the middle of like the the rough part. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Mm -hmm. When you say character flaws, mm -hmm. they're having a hard time reading between the lines. Okay. What are you saying when you say I, I had character flaws? Well, I just had character flaws. Like I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't solid. Like I wasn't, I don't think that, I mean, I was like, I was in hunt mode, so to say. I was a hunter. I was like, yeah, I was, I was you, in hunt you mode. On the you know what I'm saying? Tell them yeah, what you mean. I was, I was in hunt mode. It I was, was a hunting. dog out yeah, here yeah, in these streets. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, the okay. streets was calling my name. The streets was you know calling. You were answering. Yeah, okay, yeah. Got you. And so, but for me, what really got me was like, I'm a businessman, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm in this room full of business owners, right? Full of people that's dogs in whatever lane or perspective lane they're in. While I was in that room, I remember like it was yesterday, and it, it always messes me up. I was looking at women. I'm in there like, boy, that lady fine, boy. Like, boy, she gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I'm I'm thinking. I even had this con I had this conversation with Andre Norman. And when I left, I left, no contacts, no connects, no follow ups. No, it, it was just like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? You know what I'm saying? A couple pictures, but I was in and out. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it, it, I didn't serve the purpose that it was there for, right? And so I tell, I've never told nobody this story. Like, this is the first time, yeah, this is exclusive. But like, when I was in there, I just remember, I remember everybody in white. I remember coming down a little spiral thing. We drinking, having a good time. And I'm in there looking at women, right? And I thought to myself when I left and when I got home, I was like, bro, you failed. Mm. And so it, it it reminded me of like all of these things like because now I'm, I'm like bro I'm dope at what I do right I'm a dog you know what I'm saying why am I not getting invited to places you know what I'm saying <laughs> why am I not in the same rooms that I'm supposed to be in right why am I not on stage just speaking like I'm supposed to be speaking right so it, it came down to a point where like okay you in you in the interview space you do the podcast you do all these areas now if somebody came up to you and was like hey look you know I got a podcast I do X Y and Z you could tell if they was on some BS, mm -hmm. right? Like, she full of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody doing that for real. That's the same thing. So you think the elite of people will invite me somewhere, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Knowing like, oh, he full of... He playing around. He bullshitting. You know what I'm saying? Easy. So now I'm like, oh, that's why. That's what it is, right? And so I'll tell anybody, I'll tell any and everybody this. I was the wrong person to lead your girl around. Mm. I was. I am surprised by this. You're supposed to be. I really am surprised. You know by what I'm this. saying? Just being I, honest. I feel like I could, you know, I'd be, I'd be, I could, I could pick out mm -hmm. the one that you should stay away from. Yeah. I never felt that way about you. You weren't supposed to. Wow, you was real good at it. I'm telling you. You know okay, what I'm saying? All right. But now I'm probably the best person you can lead your girl around, right? Because now what I understand is, I, and I've said this multiple times, the only one was mine. Mm. I don't want nobody else's nothing. I don't want your girl. I don't want your money. I don't want your business. I don't want nothing that ain't mine. You know what I'm saying? Because I know how hard I work. I know how hard I prayed and manifested. I know that all the things that I need, right? It may not be what the, same, the next person needs. I don't want no parts of it. You know, it may fit like this. It may, be, it may fit strong right here, but it ain't going to fit in all these other areas. I know me and my lady like this. So what was it that got you from Social Proof Dinner to meeting your lady, and then, and then I want to know how you met her. But mm -hmm. what got you just in the right space for her? So, I think that dark work, that shadow work, you know. Talk about it. So when I when I uh, when I separated, I moved out. I left them with everything. I had to create. I wanted to leave my girls in the same situation. I didn't want to interfere. Like just, I moved like five minutes away. I got a one bedroom apartment. And during that time, it was like, I was, I'm so used to coming home to my girls. Daddy! You know what I'm saying? And so during that time, it was like, ah, shoot. Like, uh, uh, dang, they ain't. You know what I'm saying? So I was trying to figure out things to do. So I don't know, probably don't remember this junk, but it was like one point in time, I was working out at midnight. Right? Mm -hmm. I would come home, I would work all day, I'd go get me something to eat, come home, and I'd be sitting there. And I don't watch TV for real. So I was sitting there, I'm like, I need to do something. So I just go to the little gym and apartment complex be midnight i work out come home go to sleep wake up do it all over again you know what i'm saying and then it went from that to me finding a place to go every day after i left work so every day i leave my store 
I would go to like some restaurant. So Tuesday I went to the re- Mexican restaurant. Wednesday I went to this place. Thursday I went to this. You know what I'm saying? Every week, and and it got to the point where I was sitting at the bar. I like, give me something to eat. Give me something to drink. Have a little conversation. I'm gone. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't want no parts of nobody. I don't want to. I didn't want to talk to nobody. Like I would talk, but I didn't. I wasn't trying to like connect. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't in that space. You know. And so it went from there um, to me just coming home, sitting in the living room in the dark. You know what I mean? Like really, like like bro, what the f- what's going on? You know, so it, it was it was probably two three weeks of me coming home sitting in the dark until I fell asleep on the couch, just sitting there. You know, and that was the time that shifted, right? That was the time that it was like, hey, you need to get your shit together, right? Like no more, no more of this, like because you know at the time you get depressed, you know you get you you start missing the norm, right? And so I had to recondition my mind, and that's when I started thinking about all this stuff, like bro, like that's why. This why, like, it, it's not a, it's not a, I, the blue thing. Like, I said, I left these breadcrumbs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, these breadcrumbs was left. That's why I'm in this space, right? So it's like, mm, let me stop it, cut it off at the head, and let me fix it where it started from. You know, so that's when I start doing the mirror work. That's when I start, you know, really focusing on reshaping my mind and rebuilding my body and re, like, configuring who I am as a person and understanding. Like I said earlier, I got those character flaws. Let me fix those. Now. Well, I'm as solid as they come. You know what I'm saying? I'm as solid. I'm as solid as they come. How? Because it's a lot of men mm-hmm. with some character flaws that have not yet figured out. They may know they have character flaws. Like I can identify this, mm-hmm. but damn it, I don't know what to do about it. Mm-hmm. So for me, I knew exactly what to do about it. Right? It's me. I'm the only person. You look in the mirror. You're the only person you can't lie to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you the only person, like that's the only person that know all your flaws, all your weaknesses, right? You can't lie to that person. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the shadow work. Like it was me versus me. You know what I'm saying? It's like who go it's almost like having two people on your shoulder. It's like the old me versus the new me. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's the battle. So is it just cause you still have eyeballs, mm-hmm. you're still human. Mm-hmm. So when you see a beautiful woman, is it you saying something in your head now that you weren't saying before? Mm-mm, I don't or even. Is you're s- not even. Your lenses are different. Like I'm not even seeing. You're beautiful, but I'm not seeing you in, in that light. You're you're somebody else. That, that ain't my lady. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's as simple as that. That ain't my lady. It's I just that simple. That. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just. It, I mean, it's literally that simple. And no matter who it is, what it is, how it is, and that's one of the things that that gave me so much strength was that there is not one person that can make me do something that I don't want to do. These are facts. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't care who you are. Okay, what you look like, I don't, I don't care. Like, that's not mine. You know what I mean? And so I always have that notion and that understanding. That ain't my woman. So in, in raising daughters, mm-hmm. there's so much conversation around, like, how we raise our black girls. You know, Kevin Samuels, may he rest in peace, his mm-hmm. whole thing was, like, black women are not raised to be wives, mm-hmm. um, which is one thing I, that he said that I did agree with. The thing that he would say that I didn't necessarily agree with was that we should be okay with our husbands having multiple women. Mm. That that should not necessarily be a deal breaker for us. It should almost be an expectation. With you living on both sides, right, who you were before, who you are now, and you're a father to two girls, Mm -hmm. what will you teach them about how they relate to men, their relationships? I'm going to be their example. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's not even about... like I. Everybody got their own preference, right? You know what I'm saying? I can't knock somebody for how they feel. I don't, that's them. That's them. My lady said all the time, monkey circus, right? <laughs> not my monkey, not my circus. You know, it's cool. But for me, like, I know that relationships and I know that connections and partnerships, that's a spiritual bond. You know what I'm saying? That bond is sacred. You know what I mean? And so, like, for me, I don't want, like, again, I don't want what's not mine. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the, that's the thing. Once you find, once you find yours, it feels different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everything is completely different. Every- but if your daughter comes to you, she's in high school, and mm-hmm. she's like, yo, I really like this guy. We've been going together, but I think he's dating somebody else, or he likes somebody else. I'm going to have a conversation your, with him. With him? Yeah, hell yeah. Well, but, but he's gone. Now she's in college. So the conversation with her, mm-hmm. what is the conversation? What are you teaching her that she should accept in relationships? So in, in relationships... It's, it's going to be the same. Like I said, I'm going to be the example. Your man should be solid, right? And one of the things that I think that I never got and I wish I would have gotten 
was a conversation with the woman that I'm with's father. Mm. Right? And and so for me, it's like, okay, if this is the woman, if this is the, the, the man or the boy that my daughter chooses, let me instill what I can for him to be a better version of himself for my daughter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And vice versa. So it's like, even, even if she comes to me saying something that, it's like, baby, that's wrong. Like, you shouldn't be like that towards him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And be able to have that com- that level of conversation, but do it on both sides. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, as as growing boys, we don't know what their father taught them, right? We don't know if, if their father they, was right, there to teach if, them anything. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I've always felt, I didn't have my pops. So I've always looked at other men like, all right, what, what you think? You know what I'm saying? And most of the time I was met with a brick wall. You know, but I've always said to myself, like, listen, if when my daughters, when whoever they're with, right, we're gonna have that conversation. We're gonna have a conversation. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell them like you can be open and honest with me. And there's no judgment there because you need it, right? One of my goals and one of the things that I've always strived to do is like I'm working to be the version of the person that I needed when I was twelve. Like I'm like that that's in half. But I'm looking to be that guy that I needed when I was twelve. So of course when it comes to other kids or other people or other men or whatever, that version of me is going to help so many other people. Facts. You know what I mean? Because, again, you can see that I'm solid, right? And I don't, I don't know who else is solid. I don't know, but I know for a fact, like, that, that in itself creates a freedom that I've never felt before. You know what I'm saying? Because you're just operating with a different – you're showing up different. Yeah, it's like, hey, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Ain't no pressure. Ain't no smoke. You know what I'm saying? We can high five. We can uh, we can bound it out, but ain't no smoke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's it's never it's never and it's it's even like you could go to the bar, buy drinks, have a good time. Like bro, I'm out. Y'all have a good. Y'all get home safe. Like that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like no smoke at all. So how did you meet your your current woman? So I I met her at because we're in Atlanta. When yeah. they say it ain't no good people. Yeah, I met her in her wine bar, right? So I actually came to her, I was invited to her wine bar by some friends of mine, some women that was in there and they was in there drinking. And again, I'm turn up champ, right? I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you there. You know what I'm saying? So we was in there, uh, she got a wine bar. They messed around and gave me the music. You know what right. I mean? I, I'm in there, they got them dancing and twerking. And, he was the DJ for the night. Yeah, I was killing it. But then uh, she was like, shut that junk off. Like, she was, cause she had left. So she was like, turn up music, it's a wine bar. We, we need to be, and so, um, that was she remembered me from that right and then one day we was at uh, a spot a restaurant they do like a little joint that was going there every thursday right mm-hmm. that's and, your uh, thursday spot my thursday spot so i go there i'm gonna tell you what, i'm gonna tell you i was if somebody wanted to take me out they knew where to, they find, knew where to find me every week they knew where to find me at like clockwork right and so i was at my spot and uh, i was sitting outside and i always wear my hat back and uh i was on the rail talking to one of my partners and she walked past and she was like hey mr smoothie man like that and i looked I was like, whoa, shit. Like, that woman is fine. Like, boy, who is that? You know what I'm saying? So I know all my customers. I know all the people that I do. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't, who is this lady? And so I seen her business partner walk up behind her. I said, that's the damn lady from the wine bar? <laughs> like, God. You know? And so we're sitting, we're in the, in the spot. They had like a little concert going on in the restaurant. And um, whoever was there kind of invited her to the stage. Like, they brought them there. They wanted to do some work at her spot. So they wanted to show them uh, how they get down. So I'm eating and I see her. And I'm like, boy, that woman is fine, boy. And so um, I seen her on the stage, and I happened to, like, look at her and smile at her. And I'm like, boy, you better leave me alone, boy. <laughs> like, go on now. I ain't with this junk. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then um, I seen her again, smiled at her. So after the whole event was over, I went on stage. I was talking to her friend. You know what I'm saying? I was still was – she knew I was up there, but I was talking to her friend. And so we ended up leaving, and uh, her wine bar was right where my smoothie shop was at. And so I think the next day or so, uh, she came by and was like, hey, where your owner at? So my guy called me and was like, the lady came by and stopped by. The lady I was, came yeah. by looking for you. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, who was it? Just tell him I'll be, you know what I'm saying? It was like the lady from the wine bar. So I was like, all right, cool. So I went over there to see her. She was gone. So I'm like, God dang. So then the next day, it happened again. But we ended up meeting at like uh, in the middle. It's like a little Mexican restaurant by the spot. So we ended up meeting there. Um, we was talking. I mean, we probably talked for like an hour, just chopping it up. You know what I mean? And then we left there and went to her spot. And then we went to another spot that night. And um, I mean, literally was just talking and just vibing. You know what I mean? It wasn't no pre- it wasn't no pressure. It wasn't nothing like that. And we left there. And we actually coming up on our anniversary, too, for a year. Uh, we left there. And then that day, like, we hadn't spent two days apart. 
Aww. We've only spent two days apart since that time. And it was because I went home, took a shower, fell asleep. You know what I'm saying? I did that twice. She was like, all right now. Hey, don't now hey, hey, time now. hey, hey, don't do that no more. After that, we've been locked like, you know what I'm locked saying? We've been thick of these. Yeah, yeah. But and of course, throughout the process, we had our ups and downs. But I tell anybody that that woman upgraded the hell out of me. She wasn't playing with you. Listen, that woman upgraded the hell out of me. And that that helped me to understand. And people talk about this junk, right? It's like it's levels to this stuff, right? They always say that shit. But the thing is, is like it's really true, right? It's levels to honesty. Right, it's, it's levels to everything, you know. So how I felt like I was at a certain time, it wasn't the same level that that she was feeling, you know what I mean. And so knowing that she had a little bit more experience, or you know, had is a relationship, older? yeah, she's a little older than I am, you know what I'm saying. And so that was the other thing about Kevin Samuels. He was like, don't nobody want a, a woman with kids. And I'm like, bro, you crazy. Yeah, well, she got to come on down. down yeah, hey, studio, boy, you crazy. Give the lady some hope because. Bro, you crazy. Ever, boy. I want that you, one. Yeah. That, that's, the, that's what I want. <laughs> you know what I'm so when you say she upgraded you, I want I want to know not in what way she upgraded mm -hmm. you, but what was it about her mm -hmm. that caused, it a, caused a shift in you? Um, I think it was just who she is as a person, right? She'll give you whatever like we have the same like mentality we have the same thought process like we have the same goals and didn't even know it you know like my one of one of one of my goals has always been 5g right i said all the time 5g you know and they're like what is that i want to make sure that i leave five generations mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying her thing is generational wealth right so she want to make sure she got she got the same type of you know what i'm saying like in a couple of years like I, i've always said when i turn 40 bro i'm giving my driver's license back like you can have them. I ain't Shut driving up. no more. Need a driver. No, I ain't driving no more after that. You know what I'm saying? Her thing is now, shit, we finna be bi coastal. Like we we finna move out of the country. You know, she getting her a helicopter license right now. Y'all ain't playing. No. I gotta meet this lady. Yeah. She so dope. She a dog, bro. She a dog. You know, I and love it. and so from there, um, just understanding real quick, because there was a point behind that question. I think a lot of women think that the way that we upgrade a man is by no, 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 making no. you do the thing mm -hmm. but it sounds like she inspired you to do the thing just by who she was yeah she, who she was like she she operates at a high level right and so experiencing someone else that operates at an extremely high level you know what i'm saying it's like oh shoot you gotta rise like, to the occasion yeah let's do it this is what we're doing let's do it you know what i mean and so that was always like a, a positive and then for me i didn't even notice just who i am was completely different for her you know what I'm saying? Like for me, I make her coffee every morning. I don't even drink coffee. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to make her coffee. So it's like I make her coffee every morning. You know, and so that was something that she was like, nobody's ever done that. You know, and it wasn't that I was like, let me find out something I can do. It's like, no, nah, it's like I see that you drink coffee every morning. Let me make that junk for you. Let me have that junk ready. If I get up earlier, you know what I'm saying? And it started for me just waking up a little earlier and doing it because I, I was always waking up early. To now it's like, all right, let me make sure I get her coffee, even be even if she's up. Let me go. Let me go run and grab that coffee real quick, cause I know she gonna she gonna want that damn coffee. I love this for you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you're just like in another. Your spirit, yeah, is just different because of you know your surroundings and even who you are. Cause mm -hmm. I don't want to just say it's because of your relationship, but it's what you went through that really not even. It's like made you who you were meant to be. Mm -hmm. Cause you're not somebody new. It's who you originally were. You're right. just getting back to yourself. Right. So I love that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very excited for you. Yeah, it's dope because like we we have she asked me the other day, she was like, Why is it so easy for you to make adjustments when I mention something to you? Right. So I was like, I mean, that's an easy question, you know, because I want to be the best version of myself. Right. And so when she sees me, and she tells me all the time, she's like, When I see you, I see greatness, mm -hmm. right? And that's the only thing I expect out of you. Right. So when I understand that and I know where it's coming from, I know it's genuine. I know that's like genuinely there, right? So it's like when you tell me something that you see in me, I need to adjust. You know what I'm saying? So you closed your store down mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. What was, and y'all were together. Mm -hmm. What was her reaction to, and I'm sure it wasn't like one day the store just closed. I'm yeah. sure this was like a process, but what was close, her was <laughs> reaction, I guess, or her perception of you during that time she was like the only thing that she said she said you should have better planned because you knew it was coming mm. you but know? it wasn't a i told you so no 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 it was like hey what's next mm. you know what are we finna do you know and so now like 
And right now we're working on three projects. Like we're opening up three restaurants all simultaneously, you know, together. So when you're talking about kids, these are our kids. Business partnership. Yeah. So now, like she's, she said up before, she never had a partner for real. You know, I've never had a partner for real. Now we have partners. Like we got a partnership, mm -hmm. you know, where we can lean on each other when we need it, you know, and just always be in a space that it's like, hey, what we need to do next? Like, all right, what you got? All right, this is what I got. Let's run it, you know? And I've never had somebody support me as much as she do. Like when I got, I got the key to the city of my hometown last year, and we had just really like started communicating and talking and got kind of got serious. She flew out there, you know what I'm saying? She was like, no, I'm coming. I'm like, what? Like, no, I'm coming. Every interview I did, she was there. Every event I did, she was there. You know, even she's she've even moved stuff around so that she, so that she can be there. You know, and I'm like, damn, this woman is at everything I do. Priceless. You know what I'm saying? And that right there, it gives for a man. Put that in a, that that battery in your back, baby. Well, I, I run know through what a brick do. wall. I know what it does. I'm talking about full steam, right? So, like, as a man, to have somebody believe in us, I'm telling you that that you talking about a Duracell. Like, to know that this woman believe in me, and she, like, what? Say no more. Say no more. I got it, baby. Say no more. Say no more. I love it. Mm -hmm. So inspiring, y'all. Mm -hmm. Fellas, get your ish together, okay? Because when you get your ish together, you can live happily ever after like Keon, <laughs> okay? Where all of the pieces. And this is the thing. It's not that life is going to be perfect. Nah. But it's your perception of things is, like, the way, the lens by which you're looking at life mm -hmm. is just different. It's Everything is not a problem. Nah. There's a possibility, right? Nah. Yeah. You got to get that ego, though. That, that's the biggest thing, I think, for men is, like, understanding the ego, right? And and when it comes to relationships, like, the only time I really bring my ego out is when I'm either, like, playing sports or, like, competing or, like, doing something like that. Other than that, there's no reason for me to have an ego, right? So, like, when it comes down to my lady... I don't want an ego word, right? She sees things differently than I see them. You know what I'm saying? She's exp her experiences are completely different than mine. So if she sees something and she challenges me, it shouldn't make, it shouldn't make me like, Ugh, you know what I'm saying? And so one of the things that I think about all the time is like that 120 joint. You know what I'm saying? Like E.B. talking about that 120, like mm -hmm. I want to be good in every area, right? I'm not just a great businessman. I'm a Tell great father. Tell us the 120. I'm not familiar. So uh, with 120, I know E.T. E e e e talk about like being 120, Right, all the way around, mm -hmm. like being being great at everything that you do. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a lot of it's a lot of strong business owners that have terrible relationship with their kids. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a lot of people that are great with their kids but terrible in business. You know what I'm saying? Or they they wife don't like them but their kids love them. Like you know what I'm saying? So it's 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 like I'm built to be great in all areas. You know what I mean? And so that's the only thing that I expect out of myself. It's like, I'm going to be a great friend. I'm going to be a great spouse, right? I'm going to be a great son. You know, I'm going to be an amazing father. I'm going to be a great businessman, and I'm going to do it with integrity. You know what I'm saying? Across the board. So no matter what happens, I know that I'm going to give my absolute best in whatever area. And if I need to be stretched, and that's that's what happens. Like, I get stretched where you get challenged, and you're like, no, you ain't doing it. It's like, all right, bet. At first, you bring out the ego, like, but I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I'm. It's like, you know what? You're right. I am built for this. So I'm going to do this too, right? What else you got? I'm going to do that too. Throw something else on the plate because I'm going to do that too across the board until now you like, bro, like, what can shit, I, I, ain't, I can do everything. You know what I'm saying? And now, now they talk about, like, being able to do too much stuff, you kind of get distracted. It's like, it's not that. Is that whatever challenge is in my face, I'm going to handle it. And I'm going to handle it gracefully. And I'm going to do it at a high level all the time. You know, so that's the thing that, that's what I stand on now. So it's like, it's whatever. You know, like when you said this is what we do in the pocket, run it. Let's do it. Run it. You know what I'm saying? Because next, like even, like I was talking about earlier, my daughter, I used to go see my daughters at school every morning, right? Like, because I was, I was missing them so bad. I was really missing them because I was only getting them every, every now and then and, so my lady was like, look, what did you normally do, right? So she was like, I was like, I took them to school every morning. She was like, well, meet them at school. So mm -hmm. I would meet them at school when they was dropped off at school, give them a hug, give them an orange, give them, a, you know what I'm saying, empower them like I do in the car, two, three minutes, and send them on to school. You know what I'm saying? Four, three, At least three to four times a week I was doing that, getting up, meeting them at school, right? Well, now they just moved to Marietta. Mm -hmm. So I can't do that no more. So now it's a, it's a different mental 
dynamic. It's a little challenging. Yes, yeah, it's, it's challenging. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's an hour and some change. You know what I mean? To be able to do that. And so I'm saying that to say that excuse me, no matter what happens, the adjustment will be made. Right? And now instead of me looking at the problem, oh, they moved to Marietta. It's like, all right, cool. Let me figure out a way to make an impact on them where they are. Right? So I told somebody the other day, I'm going to make myself so big. I'm going to do so well and I'm going to do great by people so much that the people in the school are not even going to believe that I'm their dad. Right? So when they say, no, my dad is, it's like, that's not your dad. That can't be your daddy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The same thing that I used to feel, like I said, when I was 12, that's what I wanted. You know what I mean? The impact of my, my father or, you know, my family to have an impact on people to where they didn't even believe that it was my dad. You know, so that's the type of level of, like, let me fix the problem. So now, hey, get cool enough with the teachers where I can do a Zoom call while the kids are in, in school. It's cool. I just need to see their face. Mm. Let me figure that out. You know what I mean? Listen, active fathers, it's such a, it's, it's, it's not celebrated enough. Nah. And nah. it's so needed. I mean, the statistics, the, the re, like, we know the impact that fathers make. And mm -hmm. so, um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm a I'm gonna pray about that one because the hour the hour dry it's it's just an adjustment though yes yeah, adjustment a but it's it's not a it's not a again I don't look at the problem I just figure you out the solution. Find a solution that's it just find a solution well let's drop the mic on that because <laughs> the problems are gonna come but it literally is what your response is to the mm -hmm. problems how you can turn this obstacle into an opportunity and it mm -hmm. sounds like that's what you're doing yep. so we cannot wait for these three babies, these businesses that you are about to birth so that we can support them. You want the exclusive? I want the exclusive. You want the exclusive? We want the exclusive. You want the exclusive? So we got three restaurants that we're opening, right? Uh, one is the smoothie shop. Okay. Right. So that All on be, the south side? Yeah, all on the south side. Okay. Um, the second one is a BK Lobster. Um, mm. We bought into the franchise of the BK Lobster. So we'll be opening up BK Lobster in is the south like side. Is that like lobster rolls? Lobster rolls. Oh, I will be there. I'm talking about this off the chain. I will it is off the chain. And the third one is a brand that we both created together called Mimosa Me. So it's a mimosa brunch bar. I'm about to slide down yeah, off this couch. I'm talk, hey, listen. Let listen. Me, listen, let me come host something down at the mimosa every, bar, okay? Every, every, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. We are on record. We're going to love it. Hey, the first, the first event, matter of fact, we're going to do this for the grand open. I want you to bring your signs. Listen. I want you to bring everything. I am there. We're going to do We're going to do when it. Is the, when is it? So we should be open there probably the end of May. End of May. Shut early your mouth. June. Yep. I wish Kendrick was here. He know I love me a mimosa. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be down there, okay? We're gonna I, have over we're gonna have over fifty mimosas. Fifty different mimosas. Like it's it's gonna be dope. Like the the viewpoint, the viewpoint that you get when you get this food, the food gonna come out looking crazy, the mimosas gonna be crazy. Shut your mouth. Like everything that so we're doing I in that spot. Wait for this to come out? No, nah, you drop it. You drop it. You get the exclusive. The people need to be at the mimosa bar, though. I... But they're gonna be there when when mimosa you get me. mimosa me. Yep, mimosa me. That's the Shut name of it. Shut up. Yep. I love. I, I I don't love that for you. I love that for you. <laughs> I love that for me because I'm going to be all up and through there, y'all. We gotta support it. We gotta mm -hmm. check it out. The wine bar. You want to tell us? Yeah. So she has a um a wine bar called Pure Zen. Pure Zen. Yep. So it's a, it's on the south side as well. All, all, everything is in McDonald's. Yep. Everything is in McDonough. Mm -hmm. I don't know where McDonough is, but I'm going to find this mimosa, yeah, um, mimosa spot. Yeah, so yeah. I, listen, I will be there, okay? Y'all heard it here first. We got the exclusive. I enjoyed this conversation. I appreciate I it. I appreciated it. Um, and we got to have you back. Let's do it. With, with your lady. That's, that's going to be hard. She don't like the camera. She don't come like on, the mic. Come on down. Hey, she, come, but she, listen, tell her I will make her feel comfortable. She go. She will probably she be, be sitting. Back. She will probably be sitting back there. If you get her into the studio, I'll get her onto the couch. All right, say that. You heard it. You, you heard, heard it. You heard it. You heard listen, it. <laughs> I really am being intentional about having these conversations mm -hmm. with couples, also because again, we don't. There's so many like nuances to relationships, mm -hmm. especially to black relationships. Yeah that we just don't talk about. And mm -hmm. even me and Kendrick, we're always talking about the fact that we want to be around people who actually like each other, yeah, people who love each other, people who are solid, <laughs> solid, people who are solid so that we can keep it going. Yeah. So I appreciate you. I know y'all have enjoyed this conversation. Make sure y'all comment down below and let us know something that you learned, something yeah. that you took away, something that you want us to talk about next time. Like this video because apparently YouTube really cares about likes. So like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next episode. Peace. We out.